Hello everyone, in this video we're going to learn the basics of Webpack. Assuming you have no prior knowledge or experience, we're going to learn about entry points, how to output files with specific names and locations, we're going to learn a little bit about chaining loaders, and how to automatically remove unnecessary files from the generated Webpack output, usually in the dist folder, and how to work with CSS. We're going to use CSS loader to generate CSS, which then gets injected into a JavaScript file via the style loader and then we'll learn how to generate CSS and output it to a CSS file which we can then use in our code. Finally we'll use SAS in our project which Webpack will then convert to CSS. By the end of the video you should have a good understanding of how to work with CSS and Webpack and how to use JavaScript and CSS together. And you'll also hopefully have a good foundation to be able to figure out anything that wasn't covered by reading the documentation and some of the getting started guides. Also check out the source code in the description, and please subscribe to the channel to support it. Okay, so let's get started building our Webpack project. So the first thing is I have a empty Webpack tut folder, and I have the directory already here. So all we need to do is do npm init hyphen y to create our package.json file. And then in here, we want to install webpack and webpack CLI. So npm install webpack space webpack hyphen CLI. And while that's going, I'm gonna make a new dot git ignore file. Ignore the node modules. And is it still going? Okay, so there we go. And now we have Webpack basically installed so we can create a webpack.config.js file. So webpack.config.js. And then in here, we'll we're just going to do the first, like basically what's in the this getting started tutorial at the beginning. So we're going to do const path equals require path. And then module.exports equals, we're going to say entry of src slash index.js, which is basically saying, hey, Webpack, look for a file called index.js that is located in the src folder. And once we have that, we can say, okay, well, one, well, you know, Webpack, what are you gonna do with this file? We're gonna tell it to output to a file. So we're gonna say output, and the file name is going to be set to main.js. So we're gonna take, so Webpack's going to take this src slash index.js file and spit it out with the name of main.js. And by default, it's going to go in the dist folder. If you want to change the path, you can do path colon and then path.resolve or whatever. And so they do something like this, but I'm pretty sure that's not necessary. So let's just comment that out. And that's pretty much it. So let's save that. And then we now have to create an src slash index.js file. So folder src index.js. Okay, and I'm just going to say console.log hello world of oops, work from src slash index.js. That works. Save. And then we can also make a script in our package.json to make it a little easier, I guess. So we'll say dev colon, and then I'm going to say webpack. So We'll save that and now I can run npm run dev and it will call webpack, which will generate the files. So let's give it a try. Here in webpack tut, I'm gonna say npm run dev. Go. And now in our dist file, we have a main.js. So hello work from src slash index.js. So cool. And you know, if we if we update this, hello world, save, and then npm run dev, it's gonna fix, it's gonna re overwrite this main.js file. So if I look at it again, hello world. 
So that's not really that useful yet, so let's keep going. The next thing I'd like to do is maybe name something other than main or maybe have multiple entries so Webpack can watch from multiple files. So the way that we would do that, I don't know if we should just comment this out. I'm just gonna copy it and paste and start fresh down here. So we don't want just one file, we may want multiple files that we can read. So you can just set an object and then you can name these. So I can say hello colon and then dot slash src slash index.js. So this index.js file will have a name of hello. And then we can do a comma and I can say dude with three U's. That's gonna be confusing, but oh well, src slash sum file.js. And then now if we were to do this, it's gonna just name it main, I guess. I actually don't know. So let's save, let's just remove the dist file or folder. And oh, we need to create some file. So new file, some file.js. And I'm gonna say console.log hello from some file.js. Save. And then I'm going to npm run dev. Okay, multiple chunks to the same file name, so that doesn't work. Okay, well, that's why we have this other naming ability. So this file name, we can say instead of main, we can do name. And so this will allow us to take this name here, or this key, and use it in place of this name here. So we'll hit save, and then let's try again. npm run dev. Okay, let's check out our dist, and we get dude and hello. So that's cool, we got two files, and so we're, we're now able to watch multiple files. So that's awesome. Still not very useful yet. Okay, so we're about to do our first kind of useful thing, and that is to generate CSS and inject it into a index.html file. So the way that we can do that is by using loaders. So we have CSS loader and style loader, and this is kind of where it gets a little confusing, but what we have to do is do module and then create a list of rules. So we're gonna say rules equals an array of objects and each of these objects are going to have a test case which is gonna boil down to a regular expression and then what to do with the files that match this specific case. So we're gonna say test is equal to a regular expression dot CSS and then dollar sign to end, and then slash i. So this is just a regular expression. Basically it says the ending of this string that's being tested must end with dot CSS. That's the end, that's the dollar sign part. And so then when we find these files that have a dot CSS at the end, we're going to run the following loaders on them. And we're gonna do that with use. So use colon, and then in this case, we need style hyphen loader and CSS hyphen loader. So basically these, this style loader here injects CSS into the file. And then CSS loader does some things where it allows like the at import and stuff like that. So if you look at the documentation, it's honestly a little bit confusing, but CSS loader interprets at import and URL and will resolve them. And then the style loader just injects CSS into the DOM. So if we do that here, well, we'll first need an index.html file. So let's do new file index.html and then I'm just going to do HTML 
five here to get a little a basic script here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, we have our script here. So at the end, I'm going to say script src equals dot slash dist dude dot js. And then the closing script tag. And then I'm going to copy and paste that. But instead of dude, it's going to be the other one, which is hello. So hello.js. OK, so now we are injecting these two scripts into the, well, not injecting, but we're, we're putting the scripts into the index.html file. So we'll save that. And then now these things are going to be run inside of our index.html. So now what I want to do is I'm going to open a new tab in my browser. I'm just going to drag this into a browser, hit enter, and then this is what we have. Beautiful. So I'm going to right click and inspect, and I'm going to see we get hello from some file.js and hello from src slash index.js. Okay, cool. But it's not it's still not doing anything useful. So now we're going to start using that, that style loader and CSS loader. So let's save this, and then we have to install these two. So I'm going to say npm install style hyphen loader and CSS hyphen loader. Okay, so those have been installed. So now we can go use the CSS loader and style loader. And so basically what CSS loader said it did is it allows at import and it resolves them. So we can basically import CSS. So if I go to our SRC and maybe some file.js, we can say import style.css. So we actually need to have some styles. So let's create a dot slash style.css. And so because we are here in SRC, dot slash would be style.css inside of the src file folder. So style.css. OK, and so now we can add some styles. And so I'm just going to say body background color is aqua. So I'm going to save that. And then now some file will import the styles and then we should be able to inject that well we you'll you'll see let's just do it so if i do npm run dev it remade dude and hello.js so if i look at let's see dude well let's look at hello first okay so hello has not been changed but if you look at dude, which is the one that, so dude is created based off of some file, and some file is the one that imports the styles. So if I look at dude, we can see here that this is basically like, I don't know, some really fancy stuff. But the long story short is, if we look for aqua, we can see that it is using JavaScript to inject the styles. So I'm pretty sure that's what the style loader is all about. So because we are importing this dude file into index.html, it will apply those styles. So if I grab my editor or my, my browser, I'll hit refresh and we get the aqua color. So that's cool. And we have the hello from some file and hello from src slash index. So that's the first almost, well, it's kind of useful. So yeah, and it also is nice because we're also able to make importing styles a lot easier. So just import style. So it's kind of cool. And to, to reiterate here, 
the the style loader itself cannot understand the import so we're basically we're basically kind of think of this use or these loaders as like a factory so it's like css loader preps stuff to to work with the next loader so css loader preps it and then style loader can take over from where css loader left off and then the next one can you know do the next thing etc so that's kind of how loaders work or this use thing at least so hopefully that makes sense and when it comes time to actually trying to generate css files we're going to need another or a plugin called mini css extract plugin so let's go to our terminal and install that. So I'm going to say npm install mini CSS extract plugin. Okay, so that's been installed. Now we can try to extract the CSS into its own CSS file. And so because we are using we're extracting the css into its own file we are not going to be needing to inject the css via the javascript anymore so you know whichever one you need to do depends on your circumstances but for this case we're going to generate our own css file so we we just downloaded that plugin so let's say const mini css extract plugin equals require mini hyphen css hyphen extract hyphen plugin so that's our plugin and then now we can actually set that to be used in a plugins array so underneath output we can add plugins and then this will just be the array of plugins that are available for use so we can say new mini CSS extract plugin. And then this takes an object. And so just like how we did this with this name, we can say file name and name.css. So we can hit and then comma, I guess. And that will be our plugin. But this plugin is just like available for use. It's not actually being used yet. So what we have to do is we have to replace this style loader. So again, CSS loader here, it generates the CSS. And then this mini CSS extract plugin will actually extract that CSS and put it into its own CSS file. The style loader injected it into like that JavaScript file. So we're going to be doing it with our own CSS file this time. So how we do that is mini CSS extract plugin dot loader. And then that means that the CSS loader gets called, does what it needs to do with the CSS, and then passes it to mini CSS extract plugin dot loader. And then this calls this function here, and then it will generate the file name for the CSS, and it will output it into the dist folder by default. So now if we hit save, let's run npm run dev. So npm run dev. Okay. And you know what? I probably should have deleted the dist file first. Let's just do that just to be make sure that we're understanding everything and nothing gets cluttered. So npm run dev. Okay, dist file or dist folder. And so now we get dude.css. And then the dude.js, you remember how earlier it had this giant wall of text that was you know had all that style stuff well now it's not doing that anymore instead it's just generating the css based off of the the style sheet file and so let's just kind of review this so when you go to the webpack file like how how does this dude.css actually get that name 
So basically what happens is the entry point for that webpack is looking for is hello, or is, I'm sorry, is src slash index.js, which is nothing special. It's just a console.log, but also this dude from src slash some file. So if you look at src slash some file, you can see that here's an import. So webpack is watching this file, but it's also watching this style.css because this style.css is imported into a file that's being watched. So it has to watch this and then it will find this style.css. So when it finds a file that ends in .css, it matches this rule here. So that's why it takes the CSS loader, generates the CSS, and then it extracts it into its own CSS file. And because we're using mini CSS extract plugin, we can see this plugin here and the, the rule or the, the settings here are saying, name it the name dot CSS. And so because this file came from dude, that's why we ended up with dude dot CSS. So that's basically how that works. Hopefully that makes sense. And so if we were to, let's delete this dist file the folder. And then let's go to some file and then comment this line out. So we'll hit save. And then now let's run npm run dev again. And then take a look inside our dist and we don't get any CSS file. So that's hopefully kind of clearing things up. And you may run into a problem. This is the problem that I ran into, which inspired this video. And that was I want CSS files, not JavaScript files. So how do we do something like that? So if you don't care about JavaScript files, you can get, you can use the advanced entry section. Well, I found it in the advanced entry docs, but there's the ability to just get the specific file that you need. So say I want to call the style sheet style. I can just say an array, and then I can ask for a very specific file, very specific file. Sorry, it's a little redundant, but say I want the, just the style.css. So I'd say src slash style.css. So now we can, now we're looking just at this style.css and we're gonna call it style because file name is name and the name is style and this gets called when we find a CSS file. So let's hit save and then let's delete dist again. Okay, and then let's run npm run dev, hopefully. Okay, so now we get dist and we get style.css. And unfortunately we get this useless style.js file that I don't want. So we have, but the good thing is that we get the style.css. So that's good. And yeah, so you also may want to remove the hello and the dude. So that's up to you whether you want to do that or not. But I for sure want to get rid of this style.js file. It's just not helpful. So, and I don't even know why, honestly, that it, they do that because I'm just asking for style.css. But either way, we need to install a plugin that is that was created by a very nice person on the internet. And so we're going to do, we're going to install it, but I'm just going to import it here also. So const remove plugin equals require remove files hyphen webpack hyphen plugin. So I'm going to save and then I'm going to add this plugin via npm. So I'm going to say npm install remove hyphen files hyphen webpack hyphen plugin. Uh, 
OK. So that's been installed. And now we can use this plugin. So basically, underneath or above new mini CSS extract, we can say new remove plugin. And I'll let you read the docs. But basically what we need is we need after colon and then include and then this is the list of files that will be removed. And so we need to remove dot slash dist slash style dot js. So hit a comma, save. And then now if we run npm run dev we take a look at that style and it's gone. So that's cool. And that, that keeps our dist folder nice and clean. So I think that's it. The, the only thing I want to show you now is SAS. Before we do that though, we have to use the index.html. We have to update that because we're no longer injecting the CSS in the JavaScript files. So we have to make a link tag to import the style from the dist folder. So let's set that up and we'll go to our index. I'm just going to say link CSS and then the location is dist slash style.css. And I don't know if that's, there we go. Okay. So now if I go back here, we refresh and we're back to our aqua. So now let's set up SAS. So in order to do SAS in Webpack, in our project, we need to install SAS and SAS loader. So npm install SAS and SAS hyphen loader. One thing I'm not sure about is why we need SAS if it's already installed globally, but I don't really care that much. Not a big deal. I'm just going to do it anyway. So npm install SAS and SAS loader. And those are installed. So now we're good to go. So if we're using SAS, we need to prepare SAS files to be comprehensible, well, to be comprehensible by the CSS loader because CSS loader does not understand SAS. So just like with our factory thing example, we need to put the SAS loader behind the CSS loader or in front of it, I guess, if you, depending on how you look at it, but we need SAS loader. So SAS loader will prep, prep the code to be read by CSS loader, which will be pre prepped to be read by mini CSS extract plugin. But now if we're using SAS, we're not going to have a .css file. We're going to have a .scss file. So we need to update our matching for the, with the regular expression to find SESS files. So we set that. And then the next thing is we're not going to be looking for style.css, but we're going to be looking for style.scss. So I think that's it for these, for this webpack file. So let's save that. And then the next thing we'll want to do is we'll update this. So we're not using .css anymore. We're using .scss. So we'll change that. And then we can use SCSS wizardry. So I'm going to say, I'm going to use a variable called primary, set it to this 00FF00 color. And then the background color will be our primary color. So primary. So I'm going to save. And then, well, actually, you know what? Let's do deep pink. OK, save. And then now we can run npm run dev. So npm run dev. And it created. So let's take a look at our CSS file. And we get this deep pink background color. I don't know why they changed the name or the, the way that the color is written, but oh well. So now if you take a look at your index.html file and you refresh, you should get a deep pink because once again, we have our dist, our style.css file being created by Webpack and then stored in the dist file or folder. And then index.html is grabbing the style.css from the dist folder. So I think that's pretty much it.
So I know Webpack goes a lot deeper than this, and I'm actually just getting started in Webpack. I have been using it because I am starting to do some WordPress development for some clients, but I will post more videos as I need, as I learn more about Webpack. If you have any recommendations or things that you're struggling with, please leave a comment, and I would love to like check it out and see if maybe I can make a video about it, because Webpack's interesting. I just don't know what else to do yet. So anyway, Thank you for watching the video. Please subscribe to our channel and click the bell to be notified when we release new tutorials. Also be sure to like the video and leave a comment to let us know what you think. Lastly, check out the link or links in the description. We usually create a blog post to go with the tutorial and we might have a newsletter or course or something to check out as well. Have a good day and I'll see you next time.